I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, this Friday's um, emergency management update. Uh, my name is Carol Fano, for those of you that don't know me. Um, and we're going to change the format a little bit uh, this time. Uh, we're going to, uh, after I welcome you in, uh, Brad is going to give an update uh, from the state EOC. And then we're going to have a, an overview from town departments. And uh, Susan will speak uh, from the Board of Selectmen. And, uh, and then uh, any guests that are here um, can uh, give us some information uh, or ask questions after that. I will tell you who is here. Besides myself, we have uh, Green Mountain Access TV, as usual. Uh, we have Deputy uh, Ted Trault from the Sheriff's Department. Um, Allie is here. Roland's here. Ron, uh, Karen Weeks, Roger Audet, uh, Kim Moulton, uh, Susan Bartlett, Amy Olson, and uh, Brad. Uh, there's one other caller uh, whose name I do not know at this point. So with that, I will yeah. pass it over to, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and uh, Paul Niski is here. Ah, Paul, that's it. Okay. Okay. So with, uh, with this, I will pass it over to Ron to... Um... Brad. Ah, I'm sorry, to Brad. Uh, to give an update from the state EOC. Brad, go ahead. Um, Brad, we're, we're not able to hear you right now. Um, sure, Carol, I can take over if you want me to give a quick. Sure, okay. Uh, Ron, why don't you go ahead uh, while Brad um, sees what's up with his uh, microphone. Yeah, I'm gonna have to call, have him call back or something. So uh, the state of Vermont continues to move to a restart Vermont level, which was the first time we've heard that at the state conferences. So it sounded like weekly, the spigot will be opened. Uh, this week, they clarified construction work. If there's two people or less on site, you'll see more of that out in the public. Uh, they're going to basically walk through the various jobs that you can find on the state website, the ACCD website. They list all the major employment types, and each week they start to modify what people can and can't do. And it sounded like it was going to be 25% at a time. So maybe right on schedule for May 15th, things would be back to uh, maybe back to normal, except for some protocols of masks and maybe keeping six feet away, but I don't, you know, hard to predict. So as far as we're concerned, that, that was a good turn of events and the state uh, EOC, as far as I know, uh, was basically saying that due to the good, good response from all Vermonters, everything is looking better and stabilizing and they're gonna start to loosen some of the controls up, but go slow at it. So that was kind of the summary. Uh, Again, like I said in prior meetings, a lot of the detail, details are online if um, people have access to the Vermont Emergency Management website. So that's from the state EOC, and maybe Brad can call back and offer anything else that he has on a better connection. On the town side, in past meetings, we've gone around to everybody online, and I think to speed things up, I was just gonna, and because things are relatively calming down, I'll give a broad brush and then anybody else online from the town departments can chime in with anything that's specific that they want to share. But um, in essence, uh, the library is still closed. The uh, town buildings and facilities are still closed. Next week, uh, the state has let uh, towns know that they may open public buildings uh for town clerks in particular but it's still an option depending on how your protocols are set up and whether you want people coming in or if you do let them in what that means to people when they show up uh town highway crew which has been sort of in limbo a little bit has done very minimal road work and they're going to be out more doing uh, uh things like sand hauling where there's one person in a truck but nobody else uh, maybe some minimal roadside work when there's one person there, maybe two at the most, but they're still going to wear their PPE and, and not want public coming up to talk to them. And 
Uh, we'll try that out this week to see how it goes. So that was a relief for a highway crew. As far as fire EMS, uh, from talking to Brad, I think all the local emergency services are, are in good shape. Uh, no critical issues, no significant needs. Some supplies are on back order, but uh, state of Vermont is, is gradually getting some supplies out to local. I think we got some K, KN95 masks last week or earlier this week. So those things are happening, but slowly. So uh, no word on when the library will reopen. So that that's one of our, that will probably be the one of the last things to open, I would guess. And that's about it for me. Okay, thanks, Ron. Um, Brad, do uh, you want to give it a shot again? Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. All right. All right, so Ron covered a lot of it. Um, the total cases we have here in Vermont so far to date is 779, um, 35 deaths. They've done 12,116 total tests. 804 have been completed with monitoring. Um, we have 22 cases here in Vermont with two deaths. Um, the fire, High Park Fire um, and the Fast Squad are set pretty good on PPE right now. Uh, I keep on putting orders in once in a while to keep our stock up on our uh, our surgical mask and that. Um, we did put in effect that any time that we have a fire call, and that from now on, um, the guys will be wearing either a surgical mask or a cloth homemade mask at all times, um, even if they're sitting at the station or in the fire trucks. And we're starting to limit two per two people in the trucks, and that's so try to keep our personal distance between between people. That's about all I have right now. Okay, thanks, Brad. Um, I did uh, get an email from uh, Brent, and he said everything was going pretty well in uh, North Hyde Park, uh, but he wasn't going to be able to attend this meeting. Um, next up, uh, Susan, uh, if you can give us a, a select board's uh, perspective. No, I think I think Ron got it all. Our our biggie today is with the governor um giving the go ahead so that we can get the the road crew back out on the road um and there was even later in his press conference uh, someone actually asked the specific questions about the about the road crews um and the issues and he said he thought they'd sort of address that by saying it's you know it's no more than two people you got to be six feet apart um, and again, we have there. There are a variety of, particularly in the spring jobs that can be done by the road crew that easily meet that. And we've had Brad talking to them and getting them totally up to speed about, you know, masks and cleaning and just all that stuff that they need to do it. We had thought in in telling folks that we'd tell people they need to stay 20 feet apart. That way, you're sure not going to get closer than six feet. So, so. Um, and and again, I know I'm sure Kim is going to be now that I expect there to be a barrage of pent up from realtors and lawyers who are like, oh, my God, the world's coming to an end. We have to get in. So so for Kim and and uh, and Kim, I know you're there to help you come up with here. Here's the protocol and here's what you do. And don't worry about them getting too pushy. If they do just say, gee, we can't do any. <laughs> but, uh, again, it, it's just. Um, I, I'm sure what people are going to have to be concerned about right now is, you know, it, it can be hard to turn on the faucet just a little way and make sure that people don't suddenly go, oh, yippee, we're safe, and we end up going back to another big spike. Okay, thank you, Susan. Um, we've discussed um, the last uh, couple of meetings about uh, uh, the stitching of face masks and volunteers and Hyde Park Helpers has been uh, working on that. And uh, after last meeting, uh, we were discussing uh, about Healthy Lamoille Valley, which seems to have uh, quite a good system in place. And uh, and uh, I 
not sure which one of you um, spoke to Jessica, um, but if you wanted to give us an update on that, it would be great. Um, this is Karen Weeks, and um, I did speak with Jessica, and she, init she initially thought I was talking about just personal use, and I said, no, 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 it's, you know, because it was through email, and um, no, 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 it's for, um, you know, organizations who are in our town or support our town, and um, and she said that's exactly what they're they're doing. So we didn't see a need to try to duplicate it. Um, if you want, we'll work this week to um, do some extra social media promoting and front porch forum promoting of it, um, just to remind people and to include the link because um, I think they've got a good thing going on. Yeah, I think that would be great as as well to to publicize that some more um, because it does seem like they've got a, a good thing going there. And I, I've seen a number of people making quite a few masks and uh, donating them themselves in stow. Um, but uh, this we seem to be getting a cohesive approach here to getting this done. Um, so yeah, that would be great. Um, do you want me to just give a quick update of the helpers too? Absolutely, go ahead. Um, so it was sort of a slow week, um, which was kind of nice to be honest. Um, but just because of, uh, I think people had really shopped before East, you know, had us do a lot of shopping before Easter. So we only had an additional six um, trips this week, which means 26 total. Um, we did start calling a few people that had used the service earlier and um one person said she was she didn't realize they could do it more than once so we've got we realized that we need to up our communication about that and um also um we've had uh three new volunteers possibly which is great because we were feeling a little thin in terms of our volunteers. Um, so I think that that's really good. Um, and uh, Paul Nesky, as always, has just been working fantastic um, with Sterling View um, and making sure that they have what they need. And um, people, people have been really grateful for that um, in terms of making it easy for the shoppers to shop. Because we've had a few phone calls from people um, outside of Sterling View and the, the money piece, not having money, but how to get the car a card or how to how to do that transaction has been is a little bit of a challenge and it works, um, but it's it's a little bit of a of a challenge for some people. Um, so uh, I do appreciate. Whoops, sorry about that. I do appreciate what um, Paul has set up for Sterling. Okay, great. Thanks, Karen. Um, is there anybody else that uh, would like to update us? I, I can add for a point of humor that when dog, other people's dogs bark, mine start running around the house barking, looking for the dog. <laughs> so I go, okay, guys, got to get used to the phone here. Yes, mine just came out. Uh, she was sound asleep in her crate, and she just came out when she heard Karen's dog bark, and she's wandering about. <laughs> So, um, so does anybody else have anything to report? Um, if not, um, does anybody have any questions or announcements uh, before the next meeting? I had a question for, this is Ron, I had a question for Roger Audet. He had, had called uh, about just simply getting some masks for people he knew. And I think what I think what's happening is that people that don't have ready access to social media or email um, are, are not being reached with some of this information. So I'm wondering if the group has any suggestions on how to reach people that pretty much rely on the phone only. And, and, I, and I think it's directed to Roger because I think he, I don't know if he resolved his question on, on face masks, but maybe he can let us know what happened. No, I, I, I called Jessica, but nobody was in the office stuff. But I'm just looking for some people just ask me where to get them, you know, the personal people. 
Um, you know, they can't get into the hardware stores and um, they, most of them don't have them. And so, you know, the governor wants everybody to wear one, but unless you have a homemade mask, if you have those cheap masks, I mean, you got to have, you know, if I'm good for a couple, three days, and then they should be replaced and people just don't know where to get them. Yeah, I think that's what Karen was talking about is trying to get um, a little bit more PR out there. I just, the, the void I was thinking of is people that don't have access to Front Porch Forum or simply don't, you know, aren't, aren't tied in. And how, how do we reach those people that do need masks, but they don't have an easy way to know the answers to Roger's questions? Hey, this is Amy Olson. I'm wondering if we could, um, I don't know if this is a possibility, so I'm just throwing it out there, but what about WLVB and having something announced on the radio or even in the News and Citizen? Uh, so well, I think WLVB is possible. This is Roland uh, Joy. <laughs> hey, Roland. Hey, Amy. <laughs> Hello, group. I was just I was just listening. I just, my, Ron invited me today, so I've been just uh just listening to everybody but yeah we can definitely anything that the radio station can do to help you folks out we're we're certainly at your disposal so just to be clear the the healthy lamoille valley they're making masks for organizations not for per, not personal use so we're still back to that um question of how to you know just an individual get it how does just an individual get a mask and that's not I think from the initial conversations with um, uh, the town, that wasn't the purpose um, for the high park helpers. It wasn't for individuals, but maybe that's a need, and we need to look at that. Oh, yeah, so de de definitely. I think Karen's right. I think Karen's right. I think there's going to be organizational things that are happening happening through emergency management, state of Vermont, and you know, first responders, and then there's going to be businesses that are taking care of business employees, and then there's going to be the gaps at the individual level, which um, it is, you know, as of today, it's a need, and I don't know if anybody's working on that. I kind of thought that uh, Healthy Lamoille Valley was going to uh, handle individuals as well, but I must have been mistaken. Um, perhaps Hyde Park helpers could act like an organization and acquire some of their masks to give to individuals. I, I don't know whether they they have enough uh, to do that so that we don't have to have multiple donation routes. Thoughts? So to be clear, we're talking about like my mom is hand making masks, not hand making, but you know, machine stitching with with fabric and and she gave them out to all the family and things like that. That's what we're talking about, but getting them to individuals like me, just a normal person that is that what we're talking about? That's what that's what I'm talking about because I know okay. they, Yeah. They yeah. Know. yeah, that's what so we're talking I think about. that they're I think that's more of a grassroots kind of thing. I mean, I think it would be nice <laughs> for us to be able to do that, but maybe maybe I can I'll put my thinking cap on about that and see what we can do. I, I just kind of feel like it's a a need. I went grocery shopping yesterday. I wore mine and uh, saw a couple other people wearing them. But yeah, I think that 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 could be something that we let me put my thinking cap on about that. Yeah, I think it's it, that is a big need. Um, I'm just a little concerned about having um, multiple places accepting donations. Um, that's that's why I was thinking whether you could act like an organization so they could uh, healthy Lamoille Valley could be a clearinghouse and then uh, businesses can get them from them and for instance Hyde Park helpers could get a batch from them for distribution to individuals yeah right the the way it happened with with the conversation I had with Roger is Roger knew somebody that had a need Roger said let me check on that and then it kind of you know I, sh I should have when roger called me i should have had a number so oh yeah if you need a couple well these folks are figured it out and we just need a phone number for the person that needs something something as simple as that but without the supply and demand and who brings it and who delivers it and all that business i i can um maybe amy and i can talk offline and um and sort of brainstorm i I know that um, Jessica Bickford with Lamoille, with Healthy Lamoille, 
was clear because I I thought initially that we were talking about individuals. That's what I asked her about. She said, "No, we're not able to um, do that." We're I'm, and uh, she said that um, it's only organizations. And I and I said, "Yeah," because uh, I wasn't in on that original um, conversation. And so um, she she said it's not for per it's not personal use. And in fact. To be honest, one of her employees um, is the rabbi's wife, and I just saw today that some, they put a call out to make sure that the rabbi and his family all have personal masks, and is there anybody that could make the, that family some masks? And that seems pretty um, crazy that, that, that it needs to go out over social media to see if the rabbi and his family would have masks. So Right, Karen, um, let's talk offline because there are so many people who are just making them that, that there's got to be a way that we can okay. solve that. That sounds good. Yeah, this and this is Susan. And I think when we started this, we were talking about individuals in Hyde Park, okay? Because this was, you know, with Hyde Park helpers. And then we got concerned about the... Um, and I was, you know, the supermarkets and going in constantly and not seeing folks with masks. Or so we sort of got sidetracked there. And then we found that, that uh, you know, the Lamoille Valley folks are doing it. And if they're just doing it for businesses, that's terrific. But now, and particularly as we begin to, to turn the faucet back on, there's going to be more and more of a need for people to have easy access. And they're going to be homemade masks because it's still almost impossible to find the other kind. So if, if you guys can get them coordinated, it's sort of, you know, it's like, could we, uh, you know, you put them in individual baggies and we put a, and we put a little box outside the town office so that people can just come and, you know, and pick one up at the town office and you just put a few out at a time sort of a thing. Um, again, because I think the demand's going to grow more and more and I, I, my sense is one of our goals is to make this as easy as possible for, you know, for folks to be able to pick them up. I'm sure if you had a little box there or something, you know, people would throw a little donation in towards them. I don't think they're looking to get them for nothing. They're just looking where they can find them so they can wear them, that the governor now wants everybody to wear them. Yeah, I, th I think you're right, Roger. Yeah, I agree. And it sounded like he said, as we open up, he's going to require that people be wearing them, even though he's not requiring it, like to go grocery shopping or whatever, but as the individual jobs open up. So I, yeah, I think we can make something work. Um, and, and I, and I agree, I think people will be willing to pay for it too. So it wouldn't be making it for nothing. Yeah, I have, is... I have a question for you, Amy. Um, and is your board talking about as we begin to open it up to it to being able to go back to, um, you know, at least dropping off books in your bagging books and that sort of stuff is the first, I would assume the library was sort of open in, in stages the same way you, you had to close in stages. Yeah, so the plan right now is exactly that. Um, we there's no definitive plan and i believe that we're still shooting may 15th like nothing happens until then necessarily with the public i mean we're still working all of us behind the scenes for sure and next week is national library week so we have some virtual stuff happening that week but um so the plan right now is that we would begin doing curbside again, which was what we kind of ended with, which was people can sort of order books and we can get them ready and have them outside and that type of thing. And then, and have books come back in. Uh, there's gonna be um, a pub, uh, tomorrow, supposedly, we're gonna be learning about the results of a research done on safe handling of library materials so before i know anything about that where we don't know what the quarantine period is there's all kinds of different um but that's the big concern right is people return books and we we don't know what to do with them and keep ourselves safe and then circulate them back to give them to other people and keep them safe so that would be sort of the idea of phase one um Phase two would be to kind of gauge how many people could be in the building at a time, how far apart they could be, for how long they could be here, and 
how we manage that. We could, um, we're thinking about doing like the post office and some other places getting those um, clear plastic uh, shower curtains basically that we can have around the circulation desk. So we have all of our materials have barcodes on them. So we could turn the, the scanner out and people could scan their own materials with us monitoring it from the other side. So that's another thought that's going around. But right now we don't have a lot of um, guidance from, you know, we're all still reinventing the wheel. And I keep, I think I'm being a little hard on myself, but I, I'm saying things like, I'm just trying to make the least bad decision. <laughs> so I, I don't know, we're just gonna see how it goes. But the idea is to kind of phase in, in that way. My my big concern is um, we don't want people hanging out inside. And I think that we might have to come up with a short term policy or, a you know, um, until further notice policy, children under the age of, I have no idea, have to be accompanied by an adult because I, we just have kids to hang out. <laughs> and, and so things like that, that we're just kind of trying to mitigate or have some preventive maintenance around that type of thought. Does that answer your question? Amy? Yeah, go ahead, Kim. Sorry, sorry, Susan. Um, can you just give me a little bit of a, after your thing tomorrow or whenever you're hearing about the book, can you give me a, a little update on that afterwards? Um, one of our concerns as clerks across the state um, so our land records are online back through like 2005, but if somebody's purchasing a property, an attorney has to do a 40 year title search. So they can search online back to a certain point. And that after that, they've got to come into the office and they've got to handle the index cards and they've got to handle the book. So I would be very interested to see what the results of your meeting or webinar or however it's going to be presented would be. Would you be, willing to share that with me? Oh yeah, yeah, sure thing. As soon as I find out that information, I'll get that out to you. And um, there, so that is like the, that's a, some funding has gone into research about safe handling of library materials. And then part two, there actually is a webinar that is going on next Friday that's kind of um, put on by the American Library Association that's dealing with these exact issues for the libraries, like looking ahead, how do we reopen? How does, what does that look like? and so next Friday, I should um, okay. have some more information about that. But I'll let you know as soon as I find out about the safe handling. I appreciate that. Thank you. Kim, I would bet you're going to require people to wear disposable gloves. So I've been trying to wrap my head around the fact that town clerk's offices can make themselves available to attorneys and and um, title searchers and realtors and the directive from the state it's not shall make them available it's may make them available and i'm and from what i'm understanding and what i'm hearing from clerks across the state is there are some clerks that can't meet the requirement that the governor has put into place because clerk's offices in some towns are so small that there is absolutely no way to social distance. So um, everybody's having a different reaction to today's announcement. Um, I, I have personal health concerns. Um, so uh, <coughs> this coming week, I, Kristen and I still kind of need to figure out a, a schedule, but this coming week, I'm not going to do anything. Um, and I hope between her and I, we can figure out what we want to do, if anything, the week after that, or if we just say, I'm sorry, you know, we've got, I personally have health issues and I'm not willing to die over your title search. And yes, it is that big of a deal of a health issue. So, you know, what do you do? So Kim, I go back to my comment is that you make the best bad decision that you can make. And if you have to, I mean, I don't have anything to do with town government. So I, I just like, I kind of feel like um, my own personal mantra moving forward is that every single time as we think about reopening, I will err on the side of caution regardless. And so for me personally, totally that's where that. I'm going. That's my mantra for my suggestions to the trustees 
and and my thought is that they will trust me to guide them through that part of it but i that's how i feel and we're continuing yeah, to do I, you're, you're both everything right. that we're we're continuing to do everything that we possibly can do by fax and email and phone and you know i have people text messaging their dog rabies vaccination certificates and then i'm forwarding them to my email so i can print them you know, do, we're doing anything possible to help people in these various situations. Um, and, and we're helping, you know, the title attorneys as, as far as we can help them as the, to the best of our ability without being put on the hook for being the, the title searcher because, you know, we're not, we're not you know, bonded for that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I think of the jobs that we're trying to do, you know, ultimately, if a title searcher is coming in, it's because somebody's buying a property or they're refinancing their house, and we want people to come to Hyde Park, and we want our current residents to be able to get the best rates possible out there. And I don't want to be the cog in the wheel that stops that process, but at the same time, I I, I got to take care of me too, because I want to be here after May fifteenth and not be in a hospital sick, you know. So we're just going to continue to do the best that we can, and Kristen and I are going to look at. You know, what can we do? What do we want to do? Not this coming week, but the week after if we choose to make some appointment slots available and what days do we want to do that? And again, you're, Susan, you're right. We would make them, we would not let them in unless they were wearing a mask and they were handling our books with gloves on. And that's not anything that we would supply. We would tell them they have to bring their own office supplies because as a courtesy, we've got a bucket of pens over there and paper clips and no, we're moving all of that out of there because the more people that come in, we have to clean up after them every single time. If you read the governor's, um, the, help, the, the, clean, the cleaning requirements for something like that, we would literally have to clean everything every time somebody came in and after they left. So if we had back-to-back -back appointments, we'd be spending our time cleaning so they could come in and search we wouldn't be getting anything else done. And Kim, for the library too, that's another sticking point for me is um, until we have access to materials and if gloves are required, safe supply of gloves. I mean, we, we I just can't see a scenario where until we have access to those um, consistently that we're able to be able to offer that as well. But yeah. on the flip side, we do, we are a Wi-Fi hotspot and we do have good signal on the church <clears throat> side of the library. So one of the ideas that I'm thinking about is also maybe um, having, uh, buying another picnic table to have out there and maybe even a heavy duty kind of um, open-sided tent so that there's some shade or um, oh, if it's yeah. raining so that people can sit outside with their devices to use our Wi-Fi or something like that so we're we're trying yeah. to be flexible and open yeah so that's where we stand we'll see what happens next week okay anybody else uh, have anything to report or any questions yeah hi this is michael from green mountain access i was just letting everybody know that if you have information that you want to post on public access, just like the radio station, um, feel free to forward that information to us at gmatv at comcast.net. Uh, if we haven't reached out to your organization, it's probably because we've been pulling information that you yourself have been posting on Front Porch Forum and making PSAs out of it. So Healthy Lamoille Valley and Hyde Park Helpers and information about the libraries in the county have been airing as PSAs on our station for over a month now, pretty much. Okay, thanks, Michael. Anybody else? I'm just gonna say, is Roland still there? Do you have any questions, Roland? Uh, um, no, no, I, I don't have any questions, but like I said, if, um, well, Amy knows how to get a hold of me. Well, I mean, it's easy on our website. There's an email address of anything that you folks need to put on. It's just very simple to just email it directly into the studio and, um, and we'll be glad to help you out in any way we can. Okay, then. Um, I guess we can uh, call the meeting and uh, looks like we did it in, in record time. Um, Carol, so can you just, ahead. I just want to let everybody know that the phone number for this call in will be the same going forward. Is that correct, Carol? Yes. Yeah, the call in and, and the link um, I mentioned in uh, the email that that will stay the same um, for 
for any of the upcoming meetings. Okay, and I posted that information on the on the homepage for the town website. So if anybody forgets it but remembers it's Friday at 3:30, you can just click on the home page and get the phone number with the access code. That's all. Great. Okay, well, I'd like to thank everybody for um, attending today's meeting and uh, stay safe um, during the week and uh, look forward to hearing from you next Friday. Thanks, everybody.